and we're back with another week of Kaito Kill Hitman Reborn, guys. And as you notice, I got a Kaito Kill volume right here. Right here. I think I showed it to you guys before. It's it's this. It's this. Um, it's the Bunko Bunko volumes basically a two-in-one that i got like last year and mind you this whole time since i got this last year i forgot that i had this which i could have displayed in the background when i do my reform volumes just like how i have my ring and i just never did until today and it's very fitting because from the last few pages it demonstrates which volumes is in this two-in-one volume so we have volume 13 and we have volume, volume 14. I, of course, when you open up the volumes, uh, if you got them originally, those were the first cover pages that you got. But I can't show you the rest because it's actually just a few, it's a few chapters ahead of where I am right now. Technically, we are still in volume 12. <laughs> when I looked up and searched up uh, this chapter, chapter... 102 is in volume 12 so if you guys are looking for the bunko volumes then get reborn volume 6 okay if you want to know what uh volumes 12 where it ends off at this takes place obviously again from the chapters that they have in here try to fix it I'm trying to fix the the cover <laughs> um 13 and 14 of course if you are someone that um and, and, and you know this this ain't to advertise or anything but i'm just showing you a volume if anybody's interested i got this from kino kunia let me just hide all everything and the, whatever kino kunia and all that stuff it was worth the price i would say it's even cheaper than what they're selling on amazon for english volume and everything um and you get the cool where that where that I know I should be starting the, the 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 chapter review, but I just had to show this. This is going to be here for a while, you know. This is going to be here for a while for this arc that we're doing. You get a little cool postcard in it, right, of the person that's in front of the cover. So um, get this if you can. If not from Kino Kunio, then from wherever. <laughs> um, but um, we're in volume twelve, chapter one hundred two. What happens in this is mm, give or take four or five chapters after and then continue forward so as we remember from chap the ending of chapter 101 this fight was in his bag he had this fight down pat no matter what gokodera did he no matter what he did he couldn't outmaneuver he couldn't outsmart belgafort or bell right and all of his attacks were landing it's like this guy was able to predict the wind. Uh, remember, because they would, the wind turbines are like the same wind generators. That's enough to blow how much miles per hour of wind, which is very destructive in a very closed in space that they're in. They're on the third floor. Um, the rest of the school is closed off to them. Suna and the others can't intervene in this fight. This is a time fight, 15 minutes. And mind you, remember what I said. Zanzis already got the sky ring so basically all these other matches really don't matter this is only for bottom line shits and giggles for him it, it's literally that he doesn't even care if his own men were to die so long as he got the so long as he got what he wanted which is the sky ring he's good okay so this is a death match with a time limit and if they don't finish each other off or one uh wins the bomb will go off at exactly the 15 minute time mark so gokodera is in a pinch and it goes into this chapter chapter 102 where it continues on with that because again like i said no matter what gokodera is doing no matter how much he's trying to evade no matter how much he's trying to attack it's like bell is two steps ahead of him right and then he cornered gokodera by the end of chapter 101 where Gokodera was in the classroom because he had to crash into the classroom and then Bell threw a knife at him which caught him on the cheek. So we have where they start off the chapter saying that out of the 15 minutes, three minutes have passed so they only have 12 more minutes and it's just like, okay, what what is Gokodera going to do now? 
so he's trying to invade from Bell's attacks, okay? He's trying to think, okay, the wind is happening. All of his all of his attacks somehow some way miraculously, no matter what direction they land. This doesn't quite make sense. And if you guys know about like Okadera, he's tactical. I mean, yes, he is loud mulleted, he is explosive, very fitting for being the Stormbringer. Well, that sounds like no, that that is somebody's weapon in a video game or something. So, but he is very explosive, okay? Hence why he is best fit to wear to be the storm wearer for the Vongola side, right? So while he's trying to invade everything, um, Bell's knife just keep going on the attack, on the attack, and all Gokadera can try to do is just act defensively, okay? So everybody's watching and they're seeing that his bombs aren't working. He tried to throw some some dynamite and then they got cut off. And you're like, oh, how is that possible? There was no win or anything. Mind you, when I said from last video to watch Bell's movements, what he did in particular before the fight started and during, okay? Because they go into explanation of what happens. Of course, Gokadera does get hit with the knives and everything. He does get injured on the side. Mind, he was already injured from, from the jump, okay? It looks like his wounds have not properly healed um, even before uh, this fight because remember he fought um Squallow in the beginning of all this uh, and I'm going I'm going to even go further than this even from When they were fighting with Mukuro, <laughs> okay, but of course that was like a few months afterwards and all that stuff, but he he's still injured and everything so While he corners himself he tries to he throws up he throws dynamite as bombs to distract Bell and then so he enters into a classroom and he's there just thinking because bro time is ticking by probably at this point it's like four minutes have passed of the fifth total 15 and he's thinking no matter what i throw at him no matter what i do somehow some way one he's predicting the wind currents which i wouldn't say it's impossible you probably can okay but it's the fact that his knives never miss their mark now, when I put into the video last week and I highlighted what he did to Gokadera, he tapped him on the shoulder, right? And not only this, Bell kind of, in a way, outed himself in this chapter because he, he goes along the lines of something of a cat. Like, I'm trying to find a particular line. Excuse the moment. Um, he's trying, I'm trying to find a particular line. He, he says something like cactus that kind of alerts Gokadera. He he's like he's like the raging waves bite comes from the cactus with a thousand needles. If that's not outing yourself to your own opponent and that got Gokadera he had a aha moment. So he's reflecting before the fight began was when Bell came up to him tapped his shoulder he realized this guy did something to me before the fight actually i mean the fight already began but he did something a little extra okay so and mind you um shamal even notes that you know bell is a genius everybody knows that that you know bell is a genius but going back to this point um that's when goku there after bell made that that little an um antidote um antidote he realized something he had the aha moment and then bell throws his knives again and he throws multiple of them and this causes everyone to go into shock because they're thinking this hit gokadera it stabbed him in multiple times in the chest and this is just a reminder <laughs> um i don't know if they purposely if akira amano purposely did this but needles Chikusa, <laughs> okay, Gokadera already, and it's funny because when his body flies out the window after getting stabbed multiple times, come to find out it's a human anatomy doll, okay, where they show you like half the flesh and then inside it's more flesh to show the brains, the livers, and all that stuff, and then you're like, okay, so that was not Gokadera. Gokadera managed to get that dummy 
and then did whatever he did, invade the attack. And mind you, the attack looks very similar. Multiple knives in the chest. Go back to several chapters ago. Um, I believe it was back in the, in the, yeah, the 60s. Go back 40 something chapters ago when he first fought Chikusa. And what did Chikusa do? He embedded his chest with a dozen needles, okay? So this obviously, to me personally, I think this was a trigger. Okay, this was a trigger. This was a trauma response for Gokadera because he's like, I'm not going through this again. No, 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 no. I'm not going through this again. Okay, so I, I think uh, Needles and Gokadera are not the best of friends. So Gokadera comes out and then he's telling Bell, I know your trick. I know what your whole plot is. Then you start to see him holding up something looking like string. And even though it's not as obvious as if you were to watch the anime version, but there is a line of string where like you see something black and then it fades out and black again to emphasize that it was invisible, so, like almost invisible string. If you didn't pay close enough attention to it, you would have realized there was string there all along, which was wrapped around the dummy's head. So he's like, when the fight began, you obviously had like a tack on your hand. And then when you came up to kind of give me like, a, you know, hey, Chan, this is nothing wrong and all that stuff, bogus speech, okay? He said he felt like, it felt like um some type of numbing, um, at a spec, uh, like some numbing, numbing feeling he felt in his shoulder, okay? And he felt like he was being dragged. Hence why every time, when Bell would throw his knives, he actually atta attached the knives to the string, okay? And so everywhere Gokadera move, the strings will move. Not only that, it brings you back to that little particular panel that I showed where Bell, when he moved his hands, is him moving the string because he attached it to his hand. And it's like, oh, that was very obvious. So from the shoulder to when his hands moved before Gokadera crashed into the classroom the first time before Bell went in there and gave his little speech saying that, you know, it's not a fluke or anything of that sort. So as soon as Gokadera managed to understand and know the mechanics behind Bell's attack, Bell is obviously saying like, you know, you really don't know all of that. But Gokadera is like, that's where you're wrong. So he goes back to throwing triple bombs and you're thinking, I know some of you are thinking, you know, that that's really not going to work if it didn't work the first time. Because even if you did find out what his ability, what his attack is all about, he still won up you because he can still read the currents of the wind. So it can still be to his advantage, right? Kind of wrong. So remember, he was being trained by Dr. Shamal and the whole point of him doing the air paper airplanes was to teach him how to make his dynamite land on their mark because it's been noted that Gokadera is particularly slow not slow academically in the smarts or anything but in terms of him use because of the particular uh, weapon he uses and it has to hit the mark he has to be fast enough to be able to throw the dynamite and then it hits his mark and then he could do whatever he wants but because he's slow in that approach he needs to change the trajectory of his bomb so even if he's standing like where i'm at and you're like way further over there of course right behind this camera is a wall so don't worry about it <laughs> but point still standing if you're like at least 10 feet away from me right from where i'm saying 10 feet away from me but i can only reach you up to five in this case and scenario you have to change i have to change how i throw my dynamite towards you so what happens is he puts in like little uh gunpowder or something like that inside of the it's like extra inside of the bomb so when he throws them they change tra trajectory twice in in midair okay and so they kind of propel up and then they shoot out so it changes twice and then it lands and hits the mark and that's what it did it hit bell like bell had no chance to run away from that because goku there removed the string so even if Bell, if the string was still attached onto um, Gokadera and he had his knives, of course, he would have been able to invade and defuse his bombs. 
but that was not the case. And everybody's cheering and thinking, you know, hey, look at there and got him. There was no way this guy could have just, uh, he, he couldn't protect himself, okay? He couldn't defend himself. He couldn't have blocked that. That's an instant what TKO. But then you start, well, manga on the Varya side, it's like, oh, oh, he, oh, Gokudera messed up. Gokudera, you, you messed up. Because now, now you're dealing with the real belt, okay? And then all you see through the panels is this guy laughing. He's bleeding, of course, which the anime did censor, but he's bleeding profusely from the head. He looks maniacal, okay? Almost devilish, okay? Repeating, saying that you spilled the blood of a royal clansman. And you're like, oh, he's insane. You see that little grin, but just bigger. He's insane. He is insane. That was insane, okay? Even the rest of the, his warrior members are like, yeah, he, you, you see a different person or a stronger version of him, either or, once he starts to see his blood. So um, him seeing his blood triggers something in Bella. Of course, if you read or watched the series before this and you already noticed, you're good. You know what happens with Bell when he sees his blood. But for those who are new, um, you'll just have to wait till next chapter. <laughs> Cause that's the end. That's the end. Once once he got hit by Gokadera's um bombs and everything, and he did get hit and he is injured and he's bleeding. Um, it's not it's not over yet. He, he I don't know how the hell he survived, but you know what? We don't question manga logic you know he, he should have lost a limb or something he should have died but he did it. he did it so um we're, we're gonna be dealing with an insane very insane bell come next chapter that's that's all i'm saying that the, the, he yeah yeah go to there but but this chapter was really his till the end. <laughs> this chapter really was in Gokadera's favor until the end did happen. So um, yeah, no spoilers, guys, for what will happen. Uh, we will be at chapter thir uh volume thirteen very soon. <laughs> okay, don't worry about that. Give me a few more weeks, guys. Do tell me in the comment section below on how you felt about chapter one hundred and two of Kaito Kill Him and Reborn. If this is your first time reading and or watching, how do you feel about either version? Were some differences, similarities, things done better, things not done better, so on and so forth. What do you think is going to happen next chapter with Bell versus Gokadera? Do you think it's going to be the end or is it going to escalate into something more? I would love to read your comments. The links are in the description box. So you guys go check that out. And I'm Kimmy Chatter by My Legends. And I will see you guys later. Bye!